The year is 1938, and the French army has become deeply concerned regarding the lack of heavily armored vehicles, and as a result, the French High Command has initiated a competition for a new powerful armored car. Various different companies would submit their proposals, but only one would stand above the rest, which was Panhard's submission, called the AM-40P. Panhard's design was by far the most groundbreaking, combining a low profile and high maneuverability, making it perfectly suitable for high-speed reconnaissance missions. The vehicle was to be manned by a crew of two and featured a distinct eight-wheel configuration which consisted of four bulletproof pneumatic steering wheels in the front and rear, with four solid steel wheels in the middle which could be lowered for better cross-country performance and raised for better on-road performance. Power was to be provided by an 85 horsepower Panhard SK6C inline six cylinder water cooled engine, which enabled the vehicle to travel at almost 50 miles per hour on road. However, the cross country speed seems to have been lost. A brand new design feature that was incorporated into the vehicle was the oscillating turret, which featured a 25mm SA35 cannon on the right side of the turret to free up space for the commander, with secondary armament consisting of a 7.5mm Rebel machine gun. The prototype of the vehicle was completed in 1939 and would then begin testing where it proceeded to exceed all testing requirements and had greatly impressed the French army. On May 1st, 1940, an order for 600 Panhard AM-40s was placed by the French army in order to begin replacing the Panhard 178. Now, in spite of France's enthusiasm to adopt the vehicle, the Germans would end up invading the country before any production could begin with only a single prototype ever being completed, which proceeded to disappear in Morocco and has never been seen since. In spite of this disastrous ending, it would pave the way for its successor, the subject of today's video, the Panhard EBR. Now, following the end of the Second World War, the French army began a new contest for a post-war armored car which saw Panhard's proposal as the winner helped by the results demonstrated by the Panhard AM-40 in 1939. The new vehicle was called the Panhard EBR and was heavily based on the AM-40 design, however due to new requirements the EBR was much larger than the AM-40 and now featured a symmetrical hull with identical protection for the front and rear due to the introduction of a second driver at the rear of the vehicle. The reason for this second driver being added was to enable the vehicle to evacuate from dangerous situations at incredible speed due to there being another driver with full view of the rear of the vehicle, enabling them to navigate the vehicle effectively without having to blindly reverse into potential obstructions. Power for the EBR came from a 200 horsepower, horizontally opposed 12-cylinder Panhard 12HD engine, which propelled the vehicle to a top speed of 71 miles per hour on road and 16 miles per hour on rough terrain going either forward or backwards. Now due to the introduction of the second driver, the engine compartment had to be moved and it was decided that the engine would be moved below the turret, which would greatly complicate maintenance of the engine, but was ultimately the best solution for the problem. As well as the general armor requirements increasing in the Cold War, armament was also to be significantly increased, which meant that a new turret would have to be developed. Originally, the FL3 turret was proposed, however, this turret was found to be unsatisfactory, and it was decided to go with the FL11 turret, armed with the manually loaded 75mm SA-49. The SA-49 actually shared the same ammunition with the 75mm M3 and M6 cannons featured on the M4 Sherman and M24 Chaffees, which were already in service with the French Army. Now, due to all the additions and changes that had to be done to the vehicle going from the AM-40 to the EBR, the crew count was increased from two from the AM-40 being a commander and driver to four being two drivers, a commander and gunner. There were additional plans drawn up during this time for a 105mm armed turret as well as one armed with four 20mm cannons. However, none of these designs ever went past the blueprint stage. Following the completion of a prototype and testing in 1949 and 1950, 1951 would be the official year that the first mass-produced EBRs would begin rolling off the assembly line. Production of the 1951 model continued until 1954 and would see 836 units completed. Interestingly, the FL-11 turret used on the EBR would also see incredibly limited adoption on the AMX-13 in response to the war in French Indochina which would allow the AMX-13 to move through more confined spaces. 
However, this would ultimately arrive too late to see service in said war, with only five of these vehicles being completed, which were sent to Morocco and would remain in service until 1973 before disappearing with no surviving examples existing to this day. In 1954, it was determined that the armament on the EBR was insufficient. Use more gun. So it was decided that a new gun would be required to bring it up to par. In order to get a new gun to fit in the EBR, it required the addition of a new turret. The new turret that was chosen for the vehicle was the FL-10 oscillating turret, fitted with the new long 75mm SA-50 gun, which was fed by an autoloader which consisted of two six-round ammunition drums located in the turret bustle. Now thankfully for the engineers, this turret was already tried and tested on the new AMX-13. One issue was found, though, which was that the new turret was much heavier than the original turret, which meant that the suspension would have to be strengthened to compensate for it. Production of this new variant began in 1954 and continued until 1956 with 279 vehicles being completed. Fifty of these vehicles were sold to Portugal in 1956, where they would later see frontline service. Additionally, several other examples of these vehicles were sold to the Federal Republic of Germany and Indonesia, but never would see any extensive use. Alongside the regular production vehicles, it was decided to develop a special troop transport version designated the EBR-ETT, which was to help serve EBR-equipped platoons and French reconnaissance units. Two prototypes of this vehicle were tested between 1956 and 1957, but the vehicle was ultimately rejected for service by the French army. However, the Portuguese army was interested and would purchase 28 units which would be integrated into their own EBR-equipped reconnaissance squadrons. Now, probably the most obscure offshoot of the Panhard EBR was a vehicle called the EBR-DCA which was a special anti-aircraft variant equipped with two 30mm HSS-831 cannons. Testing took place in 1957 in Toulon, but ultimately was not successful and no follow-up tests were ever conducted, with the prototype likely being scrapped or reconverted into a regular EBR. The next and final upgrade of the Panhard EBR would not occur until 1963 when it was determined that the old EBR model 1951s had become incredibly antiquated and it was decided to rearm 650 vehicles by reboring the 75mm SA-49 to a 90mm barrel and fitting a single baffle muzzle brake creating the new CN90 F2 low pressure gun. The remaining vehicles, which were not converted, would be decommissioned. Throughout the overall lifespan of the EBR, the vehicle had seen service in the Algerian War of Independence, as well as in the Portuguese Army using the vehicle in the colonial wars in Angola, Mozambique, and Guinea-Bissau, where it proved itself time and time again as a true engineering marvel. In fact, it wouldn't be until 1987 that the French Army would officially retire the Panhard EBR, with the vehicle being replaced by the AMX-10 RC 6x6. Now I know you're curious about that Panhard EBR that I mentioned earlier with a 105mm gun. Though that project was real, I would like to touch on something that is not real, which is Wargaming's portrayal of that vehicle. Wargaming's vehicle is a complete fabrication taking various anachronistic and fictitious components and nonsensically slapping them together to create an amalgamation that is not only fictitious as previously stated, but could likely have never even functioned in the real world. If you're looking for a much more in-depth breakdown on this vehicle, I would recommend that you go check out Tanks Encyclopedia's video, fittingly called Real Wheels Fake Gun. Well, you know what time it is. It's outro time. Just wanted to say that I'm kind of sorry that this video took so long to come out. Things have been a little crazy uh, in my personal life recently, so I haven't really had the opportunity to get to this video until now. In spite of how long it's taken me to make this video, I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope that I was able to provide a at least semi-entertaining breakdown on this vehicle. Anyway, I'm gonna go get me a baguette now, so, uh, bye, I guess?